G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today we're looking at a new pro well, no, we're looking at an old product, but it's a new product from Runcam. Um, this is the Runcam 3S, and it's a re-release of the original Runcam 3, but it's not the same. It's not exactly the same. And if you have come to watch this video because you want to know, should I buy one of these? I'm going to save you a hell of a lot of time and say, why not? It's a hundred dollar camera and it performs like a hundred dollar camera. So in that respect, it's obviously value for money. But let's take a closer look at the Runcam 3S and see what's good and see what's bad. So you can make a decision based on your own specific requirements. Let's go! And here's the camera itself. There, in case you couldn't, oops, there, in case you couldn't see it. And it looks like the old one, doesn't it, at first glance. But actually, no, it's a bit different to the old one. Here is the old one, just to give you a side-by-side -side so you can see. And you'll notice immediately some quite significant differences. First of all, this has square edges or, or chamfered edges. See how the edges on that are chamfered? The original has the rounded edges. Now, we need to talk a bit about the history of the Runcam 3 to get an idea why they may have made these changes. Apparently, when Runcam 3 was first launched, the people at GoPro did not like it one bit, and they threatened them with legal action because it was a copy or a clone or inspired by the GoPro session. Now, obviously, Runcam didn't want to spend a fortune on fighting legal battles that they probably ultimately would not win, so they discontinued the Runcam 3, which is a shame because it's a really nice camera. I really like the Runcam 3, and it was at a good price point, much, much cheaper than your GoPro session. But what's happened now, of course, is the session has been discontinued. You can't buy brand new sessions anymore. GoPro has decided it doesn't want to sell them. Now, I don't know whether that has affected their legal case. Um, can you really sue for infringement if you're not selling the product that, that a competitor is infringing? I suspect that hasn't had too much of a change because GoPro still would claim they own the intellectual property. But what Runcam has done is they've made some subtle changes. And some of them are good, some of them not so good, right? First of all, if we put these side by side, you can see they're basically the same height. They're the same. Let me get something I can put on top. I've got a modeling knife, see? You can see that just so you get a feel. They are the same height, which is great. But if we roll them over by 90 degrees and look how wide they are, you can immediately see, oops, there's a difference in width. So these two are not the same. Well, the old one and the new one are different sizes. The new one is slightly wider. And that's a bit of a shame because it means some mounts GoPro Session mounts and Runcam 3 mounts will not work with the Session 3S. You will have to change your mount, get a new mount. I'm not sure about the depth. Let's see if we can see if the depth is the same. Um, yeah, it's pretty close. Oops, pretty close. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. So yeah, they're the similar but not identical. They still have the same basic functions. We have the little button on the top for starting the videoing, here we go, see, but this now it's a square button, look at that, that must make a big difference in the intellectual property, this had a round button. Uh, there are some good extra features on the new Runcam 3, let's run through the things that I like about the new version of the Runcam 3S. Okay, I really like the way they've changed the front of this camera, the old Runcam 3 sets all glass, all glass, which means that, that's easily broken, and if you do break it, it's a pain in the ass to change it, and if you, even if you want to get inside the camera, then you've got to take this glass off. It's a bit like a cell phone, you've got to heat it up and pry it out and hope it doesn't smash into a trillion pieces because it's toughened. The new one, much better. See that? They've just got a, a round, a smaller piece of glass, but the, the screws for undoing it are exposed. So you can get into this much more easily, which is great because sometimes, like as when I drop my SD card in there, you do need to get into them. And uh, so that, that's a great step forward in terms of um, the ability to maintain and get inside your camera. And now I mentioned that it's a bit wider, and initially I wondered, why did they make it wider? Is it just to escape the fact that it's no longer a complete cube, and therefore perhaps not subject to the intellectual property rights that GoPro is, is claiming they hold? But no, there's actually another reason for it, and this is a really good reason, so I'm going to forgive them for making this camera wider than the old one. I'll show you what the difference is. Look, around here we've got a little door, okay, and it has a little lever on here. You just pop that lever back, whoops, like this, and you can flip open the door if you've got... Oh, what's beeping? I a beeping there, what's going on there? Um, oh, I turned the camera on, I think. Oh, look at that. Anyway, while we're here, um, oh, I'll turn it off. <laughs> Come on, there you go. Um, I'll open this door. We won't get sidetracked on things that aren't important at this stage. <coughs> if you, I just trimmed my fingernails, it's really hard to get in. <laughs> there we go, little door, bing, bing. And what do we see? We see a removable battery. Look at this. I can pull this battery out. It's got a little plastic tab here. Oh, come on. 
Come pull. <laughs> Reviewers guess. I'm all fingers and thumbs. Here we go. There we go. There's the removable battery. What does that mean? Well, a couple of things. One of the problems with a camera like this, where the battery is buried deep inside and you've got to peel the glass off the front to get at it, is that if you leave this for six months, 12 months, or whatever, without using it, then the LiPo, and it is a LiPo in here, the LiPo is probably going to go flat. And you know when LiPos go flat, they puff up and they're useless. They don't store a charge. So unless you're using this regularly, you run the risk that your battery's going to fail. There was a problem with the early Mobius too, that uh, people tended to use them and then not use them over the winter. And so when they went to use them again in the summer, the battery was buggered. Well, the same thing can happen to any camera that has a built-in battery because even though they automatically disconnect themselves from the battery, there's always a small leakage current that over time will flatten the battery. Right, this one has a removable battery and that's good for two reasons. Firstly, you can have spare batteries in your pack or with, take spare batteries with you because once this goes flat, you've got to wait for it to recharge to use it again. With this, you can go and buy yourself a bunch of spare batteries from the Runcam, pot, Runcam shop. And just to show that you can get spare batteries, here are some spare batteries here. These are actually for Runcam 2. It's the same battery for the Runcam 2 as the Runcam 3. So you can go and buy yourself some spare batteries, pre-charge them, and then you'll get a whole day's flying without having to stop and recharge. To let you know roughly, this should give you about an hour's operation. I haven't tested it yet, but if it's not an hour, I will test it and tell you. About an hour, because this draws about 650 milliamps on, um, when it's in use, and these are 850 milliamp batteries. So yeah, allow fudge factor, because this is made in China, so it's probably not 850 at all. Um, and you get at least an hour of use out of the camera, which is good, so three batteries, three hours. If you're not ready to go home and have a cold beer by th after three hours of flying, then you're a better man than me. Right, so there we go, that's the, the two reasons why I like the removable battery and why this is a bit wider, because if we put that battery in there, you can see it only just fits. We wouldn't have been able to put that battery inside here and make it removable because it would have been too wide. There you go. Oh, by the way, also your micro SD card just goes in there, so it's not going to fall out because it's protected, it was covered by this door. And for Andy RC, whose review I watched, and I recommend you watch as well, let me push that in. Put it the right way around, yep. Put the battery back in. Come on, get in that hole. Get in that hole. There we go. Um, when you put the cover on, Andy, don't put this end in first. Put the back end in first and just pull that lever back and it goes in really easy. Because <laughs> I saw Andy was doing it backwards, never mind. Um, there's no instructions on that, so you've got to work it out for yourself. Right, let's move right along. Now the first thing I noticed when I took this out of the box was, geez, it feels a bit bloody heavy. It feels a bit heavy. It's a bit, it's a bit of gravity in there. And I thought, it, it must be heavier than the old one. So I weighed it, because you never believe what they say in the brochure. 69 grams. There you go. Actually, that is what they say in the brochure. It's exactly what they say it is. 69 grams. I thought, well, hang on a minute. How much was the old one then? So let's get the old one. 67 grams. So you see, I was right. I can't believe I could tell the difference of two grams. But it, this, this does feel heavier. I don't know why. Maybe it's the sharp edges that jab into your hand wall when you're holding it. But yeah, it's two grams heavier than you one. This doesn't matter, does it? Okay, now on the top of the camera, we've got this square button. And if you hold that down, the camera will turn on. There we go. And one really cool thing. Oh, this is brilliant. I don't know why other companies haven't thought of this. See, we have three little white dots there. That tells you how charged your battery is. Brilliant. The old one, the old run cam, it just had a round circle and it didn't tell you anything. No, there was a little speaker thing there, but there was no, no way of telling how charged your battery was unless you use the smartphone app. But this is great. So now you can actually just look at this focus camera. Focus. Come on. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, so now you can tell whether your battery's charged or not, or the state of charge, just by looking at those three little lights. <laughs> simple thing. Why didn't other people think of that? Maybe they did. I don't know. But none of the other cameras I've got have got something as simple as that to tell you how charged up your battery is. And on the front of the camera, we have a single red LED there that sh shows it's ready to record. And it also goes, I think it goes green when you go into photo mode. Let's just try that, shall we? Um, I'll try, try that in a minute. But yeah. Um, that tells you if it's flashing, then you're recording. And then down here, just in this little corner here, there's some little dots. That's the microphone. Now, the audio on the Runcam 3 has never been particularly good, but it doesn't really matter to me because I use them on mini quads. Most people will use them on a mini quad because that's what they're perfectly built for. That form factor is ideal for mini quads. And all you're going to hear is wee, whoosh, wee. And to honestly, it's not music to my ears. So I'm not concerned about the audio. Um, the old Runcam, as you know, because it had that full glass front, had its microphone in the back somewhere, I think. Not sure where the hole was for that, but anyway, it, it had a uh, it had a different location for the microphone. So this is going to be 
better if you're doing selfies, I suppose, but ultimately, audio, meh, I don't care. Um, one thing worth noting is that this has been pitched as an action camera, but I'm not sure that it's going to be a very good action camera for putting on your bike and your helmet and your surfboard or whatever, because there are no waterproof mounts for it. Because it's not the same size as the GoPro Session or the run cam, old Runcam 3, there's no waterproof enclosure for this thing. So who's going to use it in the outdoors? Because people have asked, this is not waterproof. This is not a, see that, look, look, at, look at that. We're down to two dots already, because I had this on for a while. So now you know the battery is nearly, it's, it's not fully charged anymore. Um, so an action camera, it is not, not a generic action camera. It's really designed for our models. And that's great because it's a no compromise solution to that. Um, not a lot else to say. I'll show you the app because it does have an app which allows you to set up some of the settings on the camera, which is good. Okay, let's try connecting. Connect your camera, come on. This is a very slow phone, I'm sorry. Let's see what happens here. It's trying, it's trying, come on, go. Bing, I see the Wi-Fi thing has lit up. Any moment now, actually I might have the wrong camera, run cam S, no that's it, run cam 3S, it should connect. So then there we go, wait for it, bing, now we have connected, look at that. So let me just pull in a bit on the, on the smartphone so you can see what is going on here. As you can see, it's a live video stream, there's quite a bit of latency involved here, look at this. But I mean, you're not going to use this for FPV or anything, so that doesn't matter. But it does give you the ability to preview what you say. So you can frame up your camera on your model, make sure it's getting the right angles and everything. It's great. Now, there are a whole lot of options on here. I'm not going to go through them. I will put a, perhaps some information in the description of this video so you can see if you're really interested. But the main things you're going to be interested in is setting the resolution. Now, there are two resolutions, only two resolutions for this camera. There's 720p and 1080p. There's no 1440p. There's no 4K. There's nothing else. That's all you get because it's designed solely for one task. Now, there's no super view. Um, I'm going to start talking about perhaps some of the negatives now because I've spoken about the positives, the glowing things I really like about this camera. But there are some negatives. Now, there's no super view. Can I do this? This is always really cool, though, when you do this. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, anyway, um, stop messing around. Um, there is uh, no super view, and you can't really easily and practically emulate super view because there's no 1440p, so it just doesn't have enough field of view vertically to do super view, which is unfortunate because virtually everyone who flies mini quads wants super view. It makes everything look faster. It makes it look like you're much better than you are, so you're just going to have to put up with standard 1080p. And there are some distortions. I'm not totally impressed with the optics. I think the old run cam optics were better. I think they've changed the optics in this. It has a slightly wider field of view than the run cam 3 and there's more lens flare so the elements inside the lens are not quite as good I don't think and there's also more distortion around the edges so from that point of view yeah I know um, this looks better uh, but I'll put some video up uh, further on in this review, you can decide for yourself which one you think is better. But there we go. So uh, one other change, which I do like, is you now have the option of a 50 frames per second mode. Now I live in New Zealand and we are one of the countries like Australia and the UK and a few others who have a 50 hertz mains frequency. So our television sets, all our television sets and standards were 50 hertz and that's 50 frames a second. So my camcorder, the one you're looking through now, does 50 frames a second. And that means that um, if I try and put footage from my camcorder with footage from the old GoPro, this un oh, sorry, the old run cam, this only does 60 frames or 30 frames. There's a frame frequency issue. So I end up having jerky video from the run cam footage, or I have to do a thing called optical flow, which makes it look a bit odd, uh, but I can't match the frame rates exactly. So that causes issues. This does 50 frames a second. That's great. It's going to enable me to do videos that look better, look much better. So it probably doesn't affect the majority of people, but if you live in a country where 50 frames per second is the standard, that's a great addition, right? Now, it has several speeds, several data rates for the recording. I can't remember what they are, so I'm going to call them up. Hopefully they will uh, appear here as if by magic. Come on. This phone is crap. Go phone, go. Is it gone to sleep or something? No, you can still see my hand. What's going on here? What's this one? Does this one work? Hold on. Hold on. I think we've... As with most apps from... Yeah, I think she's gone to sleep, mate. I think she's... Yeah. <laughs> the app is no longer responding. Anyway. Um, I see some people complaining about the app. I guess it depends on your exact environment. This is a budget smartphone, so it's probably not going to be as good as a Samsung or a Apple or whatever. But... 
you can change the bitrate maximum bitrate 30 megabits per second which sounds good but it's not enough it's not enough for just regular camera stuff 30 megabits is fine but when you start doing the really high speed stuff the stuff is a massive amount of movement in the frame that we get you get pixelation i'll try and demonstrate that in some footage later in the video but um it's really it could be better it could be better i wish they'd gone to 40. 40 would have made a little bit just a little bit of difference but hey you get what you get it's a hundred dollar camera actually it's a 99 dollar camera so let's not try and compare it to a 200 hundred dollar camera um, so there you go, that's that. Um, you can adjust your exposure, you can lighten and darken the image, you've got wide dynamic range, yeah, I think it's got timestamp capability, so it's got all the sort of usual functions that you expect in these things. Um, and uh, not really too much to complain about actually. As I say, the only thing missing is a 1440p mode and super view. But if you want that, well, you'd have to buy a second hand GoPro session or use one of the new GoPro Hero 6 bricks that you can put on the front of your quad. And just because I know you really want to know, uh, the bit rates are 30 megabits, 17 megabits, or 12 megabits. Why on earth anyone would use anything other than 30 megabits? I do not know. There's no reason why you would. It look like crap, to be honest. And given this will take up to a 64 gigabyte card, it's not as if you're going to completely fill the card in one session anyway with the battery life of one hour of continuous operation. Okay, now here's one feature I do want to demonstrate because it's really important, and you'll see why later in the video. This is the Field of view. Now you can change the field of view of the camera. Um, set to maximum field of view, it seems to have a wider field of view than the original Runcam 3S, but this does produce some really bad distortions near the edge of the frame. It's the opposite of super view. It's, it's I don't know, what would you call it? Inferior view. But you can change it. I'm going to actually narrow down the field of view a bit. Watch the picture. That's medium. I'll go to minimum. Oh, there we go. It's just changed. You can go to minimum. Narrow field of view. See, now that's zoomed everything in. I, I think... Um, hopefully it's still working at the native resolution of the sensor, it's a bit hard to tell. But going from the minimum to the wide, you can see just how much extra space or extra stuff you get on the corners. And I'm hoping that by going to the narrow field of view and losing a little bit of the edge, we're going to improve the linearity of the image. We're going to get rid of the really bad distortion on the corners. Um, we'll find out. I'm going to try and use my, um, my desk mat as a, a grid. And we'll now have a look at how distorted the image is from these optics. Okay, here we are. I've got uh, my camera facing directly at my build mat, which then it's a linear array grid, so we'll be able to see what distortion there is. Now, at the moment we're on the, well, let's go to the widest field of view and see what it looks like. And I'll, I'll zoom in on there because I want to get this looking, um, I want to get everything in shot here. So let me just move in. There we go. Now you can see how compressed the edges of the of the video are. See how compressed it is on the right side? It's kind of expanded in the middle and really, really compressed on the edges. That's exactly the reverse of super view, which means you could fly is going to look pretty slow through this camera. But you notice how very, very tight the bars are on the, on the right hand side, especially. I'm going to go back to the narrow view now. And let's see if that distortion is reduced. Yeah, it is. See, the, 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 there is still some compression, but it seems more linear and it's not as compressed. So Switching to the narrow field of view will help mitigate a lot of the optical distortions that this thing, I'm going to go to the mid-range and see if that's perhaps a, a happy medium. Medium? Yeah, no, I'm not sure. But um, you're going to lose some field of view, but remember that the original Runcam 3 had a narrower field of view anyway. So I would recommend operating in the, the medium or the narrow field of view to get the most linear, the most accurate looking results. But um, it's still going to look you know, not very fast because it's, it's, it's inverse super view due to that massive field of view, that, that lens. So yeah, there you go. Um, I'll show you some footage. I'll try and correct for this actually in post edit, which if you've got a good editing software, you can do that. Now I might do a video on my editing software if people want to see it, but I'm using DaVinci Resolve, which is a really good product and, and it has facility to correct for this kind of barrel distortion that you get with very wide angle lenses and that will restore some of the thing. But you're going to lose something no matter what you do because the field of view is fairly limited. Anyway, there you go. That's uh, the, the look at it. Um, what, what else can I tell you about this camera? Okay, I'm not sure about the battery life, whether it's going to be as long as claimed. I've had this thing on for about 20 minutes and it did drop down to one light and so I turned it off for a couple of minutes, turned it back on again. It's back up to two. I have a feeling it'll probably drop down to one fairly shortly. So I may do those tests on battery life. It may be. Uh, mind you, I did have the Wi-Fi on, so that probably sucked a bit more juice. Yeah, um, battery life, not too sure. But as I say, spare batteries, if you need more life, buy some more batteries. And here's the back of the camera, um, black plate, says hot, 
warm, warm. It is winter here, but it is only warm. It hasn't got hot. I mean, it, there is some heat being generated. Micro USB connector, I think Andy was saying, why isn't it USB-C? Well, because micro USB is still far more commonplace than USB-C, and I'm happy with micro USB for charging. And as I mentioned, this is not a waterproof camera. This is not waterproof. It's not even really water resistant, I don't think, because you've got this hole in the back here. You've got these grill holes. Um, where did I see some? I saw some grill holes somewhere. Um, they've gone. Oh, you've got the LED holes. There's plenty of places for water get it, to get into this thing, right? So that's why I said it won't be a true action camera until I provide us with some waterproof enclosures because it's just going to leak like a sieve. I would not put this on a, a model that was going to be flown near water or in water or over water, whatever, and I wouldn't use it on a boat unless I had built a waterproof enclosure for it so yeah um shame shame because one of the nice things about the the session five is that it, it's fairly water resistant um it might even be waterproof i'm not sure i don't have one I've, i don't have any gopro cameras i have to say i would love to have done a side by side view uh, as andy did of the gopro session against this if you want to see how this compares to the gopro session go and look at andy rc's channel i'll put a link to his review in the description of this video it does good stuff why i highly recommend him to you and he's got some side-by-side -side footage of the Session versus the Runcam 3. But I can show you the new Runcam versus the old Runcam, and I think that'll be quite enlightening. So let's do that now. So I've strapped the 3S onto the Holybro Shuriken. Here we go, Holybro. Uh, because it has a Session mount or a GoPro or Runcam 3 mount, and because this is the same depth, it fits quite nicely. Um, doesn't matter about width on this mount, so that's fine. And of course there are some TPU printed mounts, which will work as well, the ones where you push the camera in from the side, but if you have to push it in from the front or the back, it's probably not going to work because it won't be wide enough, but this works just fine and dandy. So I'll charge your battery, take it for a fly. Let you see what it looks like in the air.
Here we've got the Runcam 3S medium field of view on because that's the closest to the Runcam 3 on its widest. And I put them side by side so you can get a pretty good contrast between the colors. And look at this, see on the left hand side there, see that bright orange lens flare? Now, as I mentioned, the optics of the Runcam 3S are nowhere near as good as the optics of the Runcam 3. The lens flares are a real problem. And as you can see, I, as I go up and down, you've got multiple pink to orangey lens flares. On the right hand side, you occasionally get a bit of a green lens flare, but it's nowhere near as bad. So, hmm. and if you look at the colors, you can see that the, uh, the Runcam 3S is more shifted towards the blue, whereas the Runcam 3 is more shifted towards the green. So you get a bit of a Bondi blue sky effect. Now, which you prefer is entirely up to you. Some people will prefer the brighter blues, the way things pop. Um, other people will prefer the more subdued, not quite pastel tones of the Runcam 3. But what I've done here is just walk along the lake and, and try to give you a side-by-side -side, uh, look at the two cameras. Now, also note very carefully the wide dynamic range. On the Runcam 3, a lot of stuff gets buried in the black. It's got both these cameras are set up identically except for the field of view. And you'll notice that on the Runcam 3S, the dark levels are not as dark, which means it does pull a bit of extra detail out of the darker areas. You'll see that more when we move up to a tree further on here. But uh, from the point of view of getting a more photorealistic kind of image, the Runcam 3, the old one, does tend to give more a, a wider, well, it uses the full you know, black level of the camera. Now look here as we move up to the, to the tree, um, you can see the detail on the bark there on the left. Uh, you couldn't have seen that quite so easily with the Runcam 3. And, and as we move past this sort of birchy tree here, take a look at the trunk of this with the Runcam 3 first of all on the right. And then as we move past, see the difference. That the Runcam 3S is definitely pulling a lot more stuff out of the blacks, which is great for FPV if you're using it as a flight camera, but if you just want to get some really good footage, I personally think the Runcam 3 produces a better image. It's better than the, the new Runcam 3S. The, I, like, I prefer that colour, and I certainly prefer the lack of, dis or the reduced amount of distortion at the corner of the screen, even on very high, uh, very on the full field of view. Now, how I've done another walk, won't go the whole way, but I've split vertically and horizontally so you can see the field of view. As I say, Runcam 3S yes, is on the medium field of view, Runcam 3 is on full field of view. So at this point, they basically have the same field of view. So if you're going to use the wide field of view on the Runcam 3S, yes, you're going to get a lot of distortion at the very edges, and it's going to be wider than the original Runcam 3. So that's it's quite important to know. And again, look at the lens flares. Um, you can see lens flares in the top, which is the Runcam 3. They're a very light and, and indistinct color, but the, the bright orange is on the bottom. And what I've done here is I've simply put that footage together again with the, uh, the full frame of the Runcam 3S top left and the Runcam 3 bottom right. So you can just watch these videos and just compare them for color, contrast, lens flares, image distortion.